Good morning, students. Today we'll do uh, poem Amanda. Actually, every child feels that he or she is controlled and instructed not to do one thing or another. You too may feel that your freedom is curtailed. Curtailed is cut, yeah, shortened. Uh, write down some of the things you want to do, but your parents, elders do not allow you to do, or your teachers. So uh, you have to make a list of those things. To read the poem aloud, form pairs. Each reading alternate stanzas. You are in uh, for a surprise, but since you are at home, you can't do this. So uh, I'm going to read the poem for you, and uh, I'll read the poem in such a manner that uh, you'll see the contrast that uh, one extract, uh, one stanza is different uh, type, and second stanza is of different type. So uh, let's start the poem. Amanda, written by Robin Clan. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. So this is, you can see, someone is giving instruction to a child whose name is Amanda. Uh, what instructions are being passed? Don't bite your nails, Amanda. These, this is a uh, like journal instruction which uh, parents or teachers give uh, to the child who bites his or her nails. So uh, he or she is being asked not to bite her nails or his nails. Don't hunch your shoulders. Hunch is uh, like this is chup chupna. So this is uh, that person is saying not to uh, hunch the shoulders. Stop that slouching and sit straight. Slouching is also that manner of uh, that drooping posture, chuka hua se, bench. So again, the child is asked not to sit in that posture. And the second stanza is it's not an instruction uh, in that stanza. It is the thinking of that child who uh, imagine uh, herself, Amanda, imagine herself in an environment where no one is saying anything to her. So, there is a languid emerald sea. So, she is imagining, like she is somewhere where there is very dull, exhausted, uh, green sea surrounded uh, all around, where the sole inhabitant is me. And the child is also saying that there is no one around her. She is the only uh, inhabitant who is uh, living, who is staying during that time around the sea. A mamet, mamet. Actually, this is a mythological character. Uh, this is a creature uh, which has uh, like a half body of a lady and remaining half of a fish. So she's uh, Amanda is mentioning herself like a uh, like a moment. So who is drifting? Please, please. Drifting is what? Drifting. Drift uh, is to move slowly. Drift to move slowly and blissfully. Uh, blissfully in a happy or joyful manner. She's very happy and she is drifting herself like in that manner. Then. So this is our imagination. You can contrast the things. In stanza one, someone is giving instruction not to do this, not to do this, and because uh, she doesn't like those instructions, those commands, those obligations, those things. So that's why she is imagining herself uh, like she is uh, drifting. She's a moment, and uh, she is. Uh, Resting, drifting, blissfully in a happy manner, and no one is all around. She's the only one here. Then, uh, again in next stanza, some instructions are being passed to her. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? The, I think the speaker is uh, most probably her mother. So she's asking, did you finish your homework? 
Amanda? Her mother is asking her. Then uh, she again asks her, did you tidy your room? Tidy? Did you clean your room? I thought I told you to clean your shoes. Then again, third question. Uh, did you? She is not asking that question directly. She is saying, I asked you to clean your shoes. Did you do that? Did you clean your room? Did you clean your shoes? Or And did you complete your homework? Her mother is asking. Amanda. So you can see uh, there is an exclamation mark after uh, Amanda everywhere. So this is, uh, you know, we where we use sign of exclamation, exclamatory mark, where we use. Yes, excellent. When uh, there is some sudden feeling to show, to express those sudden feelings, we use exclamatory mark. So here, her mother is uh, talking to her, she is giving instructions to her, that's why everywhere the sign of exclamation is has been used again what what do you think first danger again the child's imagination so say so saying i'm an orphan roaming the streets again she is imagining like uh, she is a she is an orphan orphan you know where a child who has got uh, neither his mother nor his father without parentless child so she is uh, thinking that she is an orphan because she thinks that uh, her parents her mother and her elders are giving instructions every time so that's why she is imagining herself she is comparing herself like an orphan she is dreaming that she is a she is an orphan and what is that i pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. Pattern. Actually, a pattern, this is, I told you a number of times that every word is like, uh, can be a part of, uh, can be used as a different part of speech. So, this is, this is noun also. What is the pattern used in this room? One thing this, one thing this. So pattern, that is that is noun. But here it has been used like a verb, as a verb. So pattern to draw pattern, to draw something. So she says to make a design. So she's saying that I am making design with what? Soft dust. In soft dust and with what? With my harsh hush. No, we say hush. Keep quiet. So hush quiet. Quiet feet. She's putting her uh, bare naked feet in the uh, in that soft dust, and those marks are being made with that. So she's saying, "I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet, like uh, uncovered." So she's keeping her feet, and her pattern has been uh, like pattern becomes with her feet. The silence is golden and uh, there is no sound, there is silence. She is comparing the silence with, uh, she is saying that silence is golden to her. The freedom is sweet because she is an orphan. She is saying that uh, like, uh, I am an orphan and there is no one who can say anything to me. That's why uh, she is saying uh, like uh, silence is golden and freedom is sweet. Okay, so uh, she is comparing that it is the biggest thing which she is enjoying that freedom because no one is there to say anything and when no one is saying anything so that's why there is silence she is uh, even ready to become orphan for that freedom for that silence again okay, uh, what do you think in fourth stanza what will be there there will be again some other commands don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Her mother is saying that. Don't eat that those chocolates. You remember the acne? Uh, acne uh, like pimples, which she's saying that if you eat chocolates, again you will suffer from those acnes. That's why she's asking not to uh, eat those chocolates. So, uh, will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you? Amanda and as you know the child is somewhere else she is not listening to her mother because she is lost somewhere 
she is comparing herself with uh, Mamet. Again, she is comparing herself with an orphan. So she is not listening to the instructions with, which her mother is giving. So that's why her mother uh, was compelled, forced to say that, "Will you please look at me when I am speaking to you, Amanda?" And this is showing her mother's uh, anger because she is not paying any attention. She was not looking to herself. That's why she, her mother is saying. And again, in next danger, after every instruction, after every command, she uh, like uh, moves from that room uh, where her mother is saying to her, "I am repentful. I have not a care." Again. Uh, there is allusion. Allusion. Did I tell you uh, this pointing device? Allusion. This is a pointing device. Well, in any chapter, in any uh, piece of literature, uh, and like uh, anything is referred a person or thing which belongs to. Some mythological uh, part, and uh, that reference is for a short time, but uh, that uh, that tells something about that. So, Rabindal, uh, you perhaps you must have uh, heard the story of Rabindal. Uh, she's a girl. Uh, she's a princess, and uh, she was uh, like kidnapped and kept in a uh, hidden secret place and uh, the prince comes to uh, get her free from that the secret place and uh, she uh, actually she is in upper building and she uh, left her like uh, here and the prince comes to that uh, height using her here that's why uh, you can read this uh, story of rapunzel if you haven't so that's why there is allusion some reference of some mythological mythological character it's actually german fairy tale german fairy tale about a girl imprisoned in a tower in a at a height so i have not a care she is carefree uh, there is no burden no tension she is enjoying that life which she is living in uh, in in that tower life is life in a tower is tranquil and rare tranquil uh, tranquility it's calm or you can say uh, peaceful there is so she is enjoying that life uh, she doesn't want that anybody comes to save her and uh, life in tower is tranquil and rare i'll certainly never let down my bright hair i told you that uh, princess was saved uh, the person who came to save reached that tower reached that height using a hair that's why she's saying because i don't because i don't want to go anywhere from this tower because i'm enjoying this life uh, why why she is enjoying because there is no one who who can say anything to her so i Uh, so she is saying that that's why she is saying I won't let my hair down, my uh, bright hair down. So again, she is uh, imagining out of place. Last stanza, again the instructions given by her mother: Stop that sulking at once. Sulking, uh, you can say mopping or udhasuna. Uh, so, his mother, his wife, told him that as a उदास मत दो बार बार यू आर ऑलवेज सो मूडी है मैंटर मूडी इज टेम्परामेंटल और यू कैन से डिप्रेस्ड और ग्लूमी सो हर मदर इज आस्किंग डोंट बी सो ग्लूमी डोंट लुक सो डिप्रेस्ड एंड डोंट बी सो टेम्परामेंटल यू ऑलवेज बिहेव लाइक दैट अमेंडा यू आर ऑलवेज सो मूडी यू गेट डिस्टर्ब यू लाइक लुक ग्लूमी ऑन स्मॉल थिंग्स Anyone would think that I nagged at you. Nag is what? Complain. So my mother is saying that don't look so gloomy, don't look so uh, depressed, because anybody can think that I am uh, 
नैगिंग यू आई एम कंप्लेनिंग यू और आई एम बोदरिंग यू डोंट डोंट बिहेव इन दैट मैनर एंड एनी वन वुड थिंक दैट आई नैग एट यू एम एंड नव आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस द पोएटिक डिवाइस यूज इन दिस फॉर्म आई टोल यू एनाफोरा वॉट इज एनाफोरा वेन टू or more than two lines begin with same words so notice the first two lines don't bite your nails amanda don't hunch your shoulders amanda so this is anaphora because both the lines are starting with don't okay this is anaphora here and repetition is also there repetition uh, again the same lines and that those words Appears at the beginning. That is anaphora, and repetition may come anywhere. A repetition of Amanda is also there, and again, alliteration is there in third line. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. Repetition of as sound is there. Stop slouching, sit. Okay. Uh, then again, anaphora is there. Did you finish? Did you tidy? repetition like uh, same words in the beginning of sentence i told you beginning mein hai so that is anaphora and uh, if those words are somewhere else it is repetition and uh, as far as other poetic devices are concerned allusion i told you uh, reference of rapunzel that is alliterate uh, sorry allusion and again alliteration is there in the last stanza stop that sulking at once amanda so again stop sulking the repetition of s sound i hope you uh, got the point and i will send you the question answers pdf file of the question answers i want you to write those long answer question in a fair order thank you have a nice day